Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Joe's Rod Shop Podcast. We've got a great show lined up for us today. All right, uh, before we get started, doesn't matter what platform you're listening to this or watching this, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, there is a like and subscribe button. So go ahead and click that thing for us, please. Subscribe to the show. That way you get a notification every time I put one of these things out. All right, once again, This episode is brought to you by SA Hot Rod Media. If you need help with your social media, give us a call. We'll sort that all out for you. Great videos, uh, weekly posts, you name it. If you just don't have the time to get that information, but you want to grow your shop, uh, talk to us. We're very happy to help. Okay, also a new announcement. Um, I'm starting Rod Shop Season 5. Yes, uh, I'm busy lining up all the shows and everything that we want to shoot. So if you want to get your shop onto the next TV show, give us a call. The show has a massive, absolutely massive reach. This is season five of doing this. So um, I think I've been busy with this for like seven years now. Um, yeah, like I said, the show's got a great following. Um, the shops, the, a lot of the shops are coming back again because they get such a great response. So yeah, the show will once again be on Ignition. I'll be speaking to them soon so we can just sort out what dates, but I would like to start shooting within the next two or three months. So yes, there's a limited amount of slots open. Get hold of us and talk to us if you want to be on the TV show. All right, now, today, we've had him on the show. He's an awesome guy. Uh, His name's Ash. Uh, He's from Cape Classic Cars. And uh, yeah, we, we're just going to do a bit of a catch up with him on what the shop's doing, how he's progressed, and also find out from him more about what's going on in the classic car market at the moment from a sales perspective. So yeah, great show. Great guy. Love him to bits. Here's Ash. And we are talking to Ash. Dude, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks, Joe. How's things been on your side? The world's just fucking crazy at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, eh? Uh, with everything that's going on at the moment. Uh, fortunately, we've been all right, but uh, watching the news and seeing what's happening everywhere else, it's, uh, it's scary. It's heartbreaking. I, I saw now um, apparently a bunch of Porsche GT3s got burnt down in a warehouse now. Um, I'm a word. I know, dude. It's just... It's just ridiculous more than anything else and completely unnecessary but we're not we're not going to talk politics or anything we're going to talk cars so um dude your your shop has just gone crazy you guys have expanded so much over the last two years it's not i mean i think you guys are almost one of the biggest shops in the country now we 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 we're trying, <laughs> um, but but yeah, we we've been very fortunate enough to to have a lot of uh, growth and a lot of support from our customers and uh, obviously a lot of new customers, and um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. I mean, we, we recently moved into a, a much bigger shop. Uh, we were able to add a whole new division on, uh, obviously with our uh, our body and our fabrication department. So that's awesome. Uh, it's awesome to be able to have that all under one roof. Um, and uh, it got to the point where in such a short period of time, we actually had to say to everybody and go, well, we can't take on any more big jobs for this year because we just have too much, um, which is kind of a good problem to have. Um, exactly. But, uh, but we decided, look, you know, let's take, take what we've got. Um, let's get it done. Let's get the cars out on the road rather than just keep taking on work and then the cars pile up and, and, and nothing happens. So and clients get upset um, because projects are just yeah. standing and, you know, but to me, that's a very good thing. Cause you know, the, I think a lot of shops get into the same problem where they, they take on, keep on taking projects to, to try and bring in money and all this type of stuff and stuff. And we all know projects that sit just, they cost, because parts, yeah, yeah. parts get go missing and all types of stuff starts happening to it. And, you know, and it's not by any fault of the shop. It's just time period. That's why, you know, you, you never just drop your car off at a shop and hope that they'll get to it in a year. You'd rather take the car there when, you know, they're ready to roll more than anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and that, that's exactly what we've said to, to, to everybody is, is we, we've had people that have, that have said to us, listen, I'm going overseas while I'm doing this. Can I drop off my car before I go? And we had to say no. 
Um, exactly. We can help you to organize storage if you want to store the car for a couple of months or half a year, whatever it is, until we're ready for it. But um, we don't want the car to come there. And like you say, just sit in a corner and collect dust and, uh, you exactly. know, it, 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 things can happen. So um, exactly. we were rather limited and the cars that are there in the shop are, are being worked on at that given point in time. But it's, guys, you need to remember, it's also floor space. Okay, that, yeah. that, that, that car standing there for a year is not bringing in income. Um, and you need to fill that spot with something that is, you know, bottom, bottom yeah. line. It's, Every square it's, meter costs. Exactly that. Every square meter costs. Exactly, exactly. And now I always say, guys, guys forget, you know, if you've got a project, especially the big projects, it take like a year or two years and this type of stuff. Yeah. When that project's sitting and it's waiting for parts and all this type of stuff, you're still paying rent, bro. You're still paying people. You still do, those yeah. that not those numbers are still rolling. And if that car, if that spot is not generating income, dude, you you're gonna go backwards very quickly. Um, I think a lot of guys have learned exactly. that over the years more than anything. Yeah, you 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 had to, and you you learn it the the, the hard way sometimes. And uh, um, we sort of went through a whole sort of restructure and look and see how we can better plan our builds and our schedules for the, the cars. So, um, I mean, we had a guy come to us the other day and he said, um, but why, if I book my car and why don't you work on the car from start to finish just that car and get it done in, in, inside of a few months? And what we had to explain to him is I can do that for you, but then you've got to pay what we yeah. would make across the month and all the overheads for your car and then it doesn't make it viable at all so exactly but not just not we, just we, that we structured like a little um uh, almost like a little production line if you want mm. to call it that and then the the vehicles move from different stages as is their little spots in the queue so we, we we'll do um let's say a strip down in this one and then once that's done then it moves on to um the body guys and then yeah. the body guys will do their bits then it'll move on to prep and then and while that's happening we obviously try and and do as many things simultaneously as possible. Like we'll send our engines off for engineering or we'll order as many parts as we need that based on the strip down so that when the rest of the parts arrive, things can start falling into place and hopefully the cars through the rest of the production queue to get to the point where it sort of falls into its place and then the, the assembly can happen and so forth. But even so, I mean, big projects, as you know, uh, it's not um, uh, uh, TV magic stuff that, 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 that happens. It's, it's years sometimes for, mm. for, for big bolts. If you're doing, you know, ground up nut and bolt chassis work, all the rest, it's, it's taking a, a long time to, to get cars done right. Um, the, this, yeah. This reminds me of a conversation I, I had with um, Bud who, when he started overhauling with Chip Foos. And he said, you know, when they, when they started shooting the first season of, of overhauling, um, they were going to do a quick restoration and then he rocked up there and chip pulled the the chest the body off the chassis and yeah. bud went completely apeshit and it's like oh we said we weren't going to do it and chip's words were you forget if you've got two pieces you can work on two pieces at the same time if they're all sitting together you can't so if yeah. you've got to do chassis motor um brake lines i mean there's a lot of stuff you could just sort out on the chassis before that body goes back on which means the body can exactly. go away and the fabrication can be get work and the chassis goes this way and the, everything works and then it amalgamates together also what guys need to remember is we are in south africa and not all the oh excuse me not all the parts we we need are on hand and even if you do an order beforehand, it doesn't mean that all the parts arrive at the same time so that car and can that they're correct <laughs> yeah and that they're correct so that car can sit for two to three weeks because you're waiting for something you know and exactly so going back to what the guy said so now we're waiting for bumper brackets does that mean that everything in the shop has to stand still for two weeks because we're waiting for your bumper bracket you know yeah exactly That's right. I, I i mean i learned it with my shop you, you never it's like trying to give a guy a deadline on when a car is finished you you know and yeah, any shop, I, I like that that that, that question is one of my, my oh, favorite ones. <laughs> it's just, you know jesse james always said you know guys when he when he was building one-off bikes and stuff it's like this is the deposit i start building your bike and they go when it's done he says when it's fucking done i'll give it to yeah. you because yeah. i i mean i i got 
bit in the ass so many times because you do a paint job and there's a problem. So you want to do it again. Or there's a part delay or there's this delay or there's that delay. And the guy turns around mm. and goes, oh, but you said six months or so much. And you go, yeah, dude, but this is... I can't, I'm not going to give you a shit product. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and that's one thing that, that we always try to convey to, to, to the customers is to say to them, if there are delays or if things take longer than, than we thought, it's not um, intentional. It's not that we're going, oh, well, we don't really want to work on it now. Let's stick exactly. in the corner. It, exactly. it, it's, we, we always want to get the job done as quickly as possible because the sooner the car leaves the shop, the sooner we get paid. Exactly. So it's in our best interest not to drag our feet. Um, and as soon but, as it's gone, like, the like, next one can come in, you know? Exactly. And, yeah. and, and but like, like you say, unfortunately, there are issues, there are parts delays, and there are sometimes quality problems. And, and you want to make sure that that is all ironed out before the car leaves the, the, the shop at the end of the day. Mm. So things just take time. And, uh, and, and that, what, what, what Jesse James said, is, is pretty much what, what we tend to say, and I know it pisses off a lot of people, um, but if somebody says to me, when will it be done? It's when it's done. Yeah. Um, it's when we're happy with it for it to be at a quality that I'm uh, going to stick my stamp on it and say, right, if you leave the it. workshop, you're going to go and enjoy that car now for the next 10 plus years. And I know you're not going to give me a phone call to say there's paint flaking off or there's this happening or that happening. So we really, really want to take those little steps to make sure it's right the first time around. And then if you, if you take one step further and you go, okay, well, there's this deadline and you have to work and all the guys are putting in double the amount of time. That's when shit goes wrong. Yeah, okay. you burn that, people out. You the burn mistakes people, happen. Yeah, because the guys can't concentrate. They're exhausted. They're trying to do that because you, you want to go do a ride on a Friday. And look, we, we've all done that. I mean, I, mm. I grew up in a household where before every big motor show, my dad would almost strip the entire car and rebuild it, you know, before yeah. you go. <laughs> um, but because that, that's just, uh, that's the riding way. But I, I wanted to ask you now, so the classic car market. Now, obviously, yeah. I mean, I, I deal with you guys and I deal with a lot of guys in, in the industry um, who are flipping cars and then this type of stuff. And... Man, I, I'm getting like mixed mixed emotions or mixed signals because some guys are going, man, we are moving cars like you can't believe. Um, and other guys are going, oh, it's dead. How, how are you yeah. guys finding it at the moment? Because I, I, it, I know there's a lot of projects being built. That I, yes. I, I see that the car projects in the, at the moment is going crazy, but guys aren't buying, if I want to put mm, that right. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, th th that's, that's similar to what we're seeing now is the, the, the market has gotten very, very strange um, where even the lower end of, of, of the market, the cheaper stuff, and when I say cheap, I mean like right down to your 20, 30 granders, mm -hmm. um, you know, cars that maybe are running driving but need a lot of work, and maybe don't have even high values, but it's sort of really entry level classic cars um, for people to start getting going with. And um, even with those, the, the, they are struggling to move. And um, the offers that come in on vehicles like that, generally across the board, I mean, we speak to a bunch of people um, and it's just been stupid. Um, yeah. uh, 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 people are trying to, to the, 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 the buying market is trying to pick up cars for next to nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, because it's, it's, it comes across almost like they think that the market's in a desperate point. I know some people obviously do want to offload some things because of, of what they've been through financially or they're leaving the country or whatever it may be, mm. um, which is understandable. But generally, people who own these cars are not idiots, so they're not going to um, yeah. sell them uh, at, at ridiculously discounted rates um, just because they, they, they need to get some money in. Um, I, I was watching a show the, the other day, and um, they it's one of those that uh, it's a Netflix show, man. Um, Rust Valley, I think it is. And he, oh, yeah, yeah, like the anyway, Canadian guy. Yeah, yeah, I actually love that show. Um, yeah. So rough. <laughs> <laughs> but they, when they say, okay, no, um, they were hitting winter, and they're like, car oh, goes into storage. We just don't sell the car during winter. We, so we sell the car. 
And mm. that's a lot of money that you're laying out. But I, I know a lot of shop that's doing that at the moment. They sitting yeah. back going, listen, I'm sitting with the cards, two bar, two, three bar. Um, I'm not going to, I've got stupid things coming in here. It's not costing me money sitting there. I, I'd love to get the money in, but I'm just going to, I'm going to park it. I'm going to park it. I'm yeah. going to wait for the market, you know? I mean, we, we, we've been down that road before as well. Um, we, we did a did it with um, that Pantera that we sold a few years ago. Um, uh, the, the, that Pantera was on the market initially, and it was just, again, time wasters left, right, and center. So we took the car off the market. Yeah. And um, and the, the owner at that stage, he then decided, well, bugger it. He's going to do a few things to it, and he's going to you know have a bit of fun with the car. Um, and then once he, he was ready to reintroduce it, then we reintroduced it onto the market. Um, and uh, and we found a buyer who actually wanted to pay a fair price for it. It wasn't yeah. a ridiculous price. It was fair for, for what the car was. Um, it is hot, hey. Oh, no, it's a sexy yes, machine. Yes, that, that, that thing is sexy. A nice yeah. oh. I just wish I could fit into it, though. <laughs> <laughs> when, I saw, when I saw it the first time, I had the same problem. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I got to, 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 to drive it around and move the car around a little bit for, for, for him. And um, yeah, it, it's interesting getting in. I mean, uh, me, I'm not the biggest guy, but I've got to take my, my size 12s off to be able to access the pedals. Otherwise, I'm <laughs> clutching, braking and accelerating at the same time. So I, uh, I, told, I told someone a story the one day I was in um, Somerset West and I took a drop off, um, help a, a friend of mine move. Um, he, had a, he just had a, a 308 uh, restored. And I, I went oh, yeah. to, him to go fetch the car and, he, and I had to drive the 308. But I had to put fuel into this thing. And uh, what I, I'm just over six foot. Um, so I stopped at the garage and I literally had to drag myself out of this car. And then, this, you know, this Range elegant. Rover pulls up next <laughs> to you with like pretty girls and you're like, ah! <laughs> Try to there, there was just no sexy way of climbing out of a Ferrari that day, and it took no, like 20 you, you, minutes you, to find you, this. You'll you get. end up making all sorts of noises getting in and out of the, <laughs> those cars, and they're they not good ones, exactly. Um, and, exactly. And I mean, like, like you say, you end up literally falling out and dragging yourself out of there on your hands and knees, and then you just stand up and you think you're, you know, you're looking cool, but hell no. <laughs> So now, so the market, like I said, the market is everywhere. I look, I, I it will yeah. recover. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. But now, th that brings another element in: is a lot of guys are saying we're getting stupid amount of offers in from overseas now. Yes, yes, uh, they are. The, the, the foreign markets, it's um, is doing very well. It's uh, uh, we get a lot of inquiries and a lot of um, uh, sort of emails and demands for, for, for various cars and saying, you know, you guys can find these or he has my wish list, put it together. And then they want to fill a container and send cars over because um, it's a really good buying time for them while their currency is strong against the RAND. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the fact that their markets in general, they, they're looking to spend money on all sorts of toys. So um, cars that you wouldn't even think would be that desirable are going over there and selling for a good profit um, and 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 international buyers are looking to see what they can snap up so from think, from that aspect yeah do you think we're running out of cars i, I don't know um, worldwide it's it's, it's 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 always one, one, one of those cases like it's particularly with whether with the south african classic car market and i'll probably get a lot of flack for for, for, for saying it but uh um, you know the the the, the sort of the older uh, classic car market and, and the, the more traditional guys. They don't want uh, classics to leave SA, and they don't want this. They don't want that. The problem is, it's it's at the end of the day, it's a commodity. I mean, if if, if you have something that's worth that's worth a specific amount of money, and somebody, regardless of where they are in the world, is going to say to you, "Listen, I want to give you what you want for that car. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to ship it to Australia, or I'm going to ship it to the UK." Um, and, and if you're in a, in, 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 a, in a seller's point of view, you know, you're not going to say no, man. If you, if, you, if you want the money, you aren't going to say no. Exactly. There, there was a, a 49 Ford a few years ago that was rolling around Cape Town. And um, I know that car was on the market for ages. Mm. And that car left to Australia. And when I, you know, I was so pissed off when I heard it. And I, I went to the guy and he went, did you know, guys in South Africa go, I'm not paying that. 
I'm not paying that. Yeah. You're, you're crazy. And look, they don't they don't know how much money's gone into it and rebuilds and all this type of stuff. It's oh, it's crazy what the guys are asking for cars. And then you get the Australians or someone that comes in and they see the worth, they see the numbers, everything, and then then they put them out. They 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 offer you the, that money. Of course, you're going to let it go. You know exactly. I mean, a, a prime example was uh, um, that '56 uh, Chevy uh, Rastrod that, that, yeah. that we. Um, we featured with you guys a while ago and yeah, well, it was on the TV uh, we also show. had the one yeah yeah exactly um we also had had that one um uh up for 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 sale for 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 the owner for a while and mm. i mean that car was on the market for 250 grand i it's, never knew uh, why that but, car didn't move i mean i love that thing hey and it had so much into it i mean it had uh the suspension everything was done over it was uh it was running the, the vortec lm7 it, it was a bunch of of of, of good parts and i mean the motor Alone in, in the conversion alone in that car was probably exactly. 100k plus, um, and we would have interest on the car, but then we would have people saying, "Oh, but we need to discount the price because we need to paint it." And you think to yourself, "No, it's a bloody patina car. It's supposed to look like that. If you want to paint it, go buy something that that, that is not that exactly. You, you you're buying that car for its character and 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 what it is." Um, and I mean, the, the, the amount of money and the time that went into building that car alone, you would not be able to replace for 250k. Exactly. Um, so, so that car now is um, overseas in the UK. It's actually in London. What? Um, and uh, the, 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 the guy who bought it, um, he knows and he, well, he knew when he saw the, the, the vehicle what had gone into it and what it would be worth. And uh, even he agreed from his side, you know, that conversion, he wouldn't be able to do the equivalent for, for, you know, exactly. what, what it is. Um, so uh, uh, that car, after having multiple people waste their time on it, it ended up going overseas. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously it would be great to, to keep a, a car like that or any car for that matter in SA. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, whoever's willing to, to, to pay the, the right price for it, it's going to go there. Well, um, I, and I, uh, the Presto truck that I built on the TV show is yeah. on its way out. Yeah, um, there you go. It was bought actually by one of the guys who was here from from the UK, who was on the show, who worked for for Presto. Um, he's buying it, and they're busy sorting to ship it back to. Uh, he wanted it on his side because it was such a great experience. Um, yeah, I'm sad. I would have liked it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, End, endless budget. <laughs> endless, endless budget. Where I, I, I go for runs. Well, when I could run, when I didn't break my fucking foot, and um, I've got a few houses around me where these guys have like you can see they have massive garages sitting underneath their houses because it's like three story houses and everyone's got like long driveways towards the bottom. And you always sit and think what what sits down there and what's hiding you know in in these little little corners and that type of stuff yeah and then yeah you, you sit and you go if i had such a big garage what would i fill it with and that is the, i think that's the hardest question at the moment you know it is and it's a, and it's a forever changing one too because your your, your exactly. cars and trends change all the time if dude if if i won the lottery now i i would probably not buy a car for a year because I would like, ah, yeah. no, 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 you know, is, is that, is that the one? No, I don't know if that's, <laughs> that's the one that I really want. Um, but like you said, your, 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 your taste and everything changes so much. I, I know mm -hmm. there's people, certain people's cars. And when I say people, it's like ring brothers and rolling bones and this type yep. of, you know, there's like, I'd like to like have a rolling bones you know, Thiddy's <laughs> car and, and something that the Ring Brothers done just because it's a little bit of a step further. It's not just about that individual car. It's about the heritage yeah. and the guys behind it as well. Exactly, exactly. So I mean, well, one, one, one of the trends that, that, that I'm, I'm really like at the moment um, is it's, it's, it's doing very well in, in the UK and, and a, a, a good mate of mine over there. Um, we always chat about it. Um, but it's it's sort of a mix between the outlaw and your daily driver patina car. So it's oh. it's it's it, it, it's 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 not quite full blown outlaw sort of um, uh, uh, vehicles, and and yeah. it's not uh, just your your patinaed up beaten up cars. It's 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 ones where they'll rock the the, the, the little alphas with it with dented fenders and and the 
and, and things like that, where you can still leave a bit of the, the, like the welds up and, and, and exposed. Um, but then they'll fit the banded steelies and they'll yeah. drop them and they'll hot, they'll hot the motor up a little bit and they'll run it like that. Um, and then they use them on a regular basis. Um, but to me, which for, for me is really cool. I, I look, I'm all for restoring cars and resto mods and this type of stuff. But this tradition, this old school look to me makes sense, you know? And instead of importing a, a Mustang, getting, you know, getting Ash and all these guys to, to import a Mustang for you, and immediately car goes in and it's a frame off restoration, it's down and all this type of stuff, find the beater and upgrade the brakes woolworths and put a proper motor in and clean up the yeah. interior and you leave all that that how can i say that history that's sitting on the car because the nice thing about that is I mean, we all had it you 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 climb into a car that's just been restored and everything's great and you drive to a shop and you're too scared to park it somewhere because you don't know what moron's going to park next to you and who's going to dent it and you want to cover mm -hmm. it up the whole time and you get so scared that someone's going to screw with the paint and all this type of stuff and you you watch the shows where the guys have these like patinaed cars and you're like just that just just makes sense it does yeah because then you can actually fully enjoy it to to the extent exactly you know i mean i i i think that the the idea of of just you know rocking that little bit of a beaten up look but not 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 so that it, it looks untidy hey, or anything you, like that but you don't want holes just, in the floor you know you yeah, sure sure <laughs> it, it needs to be but i mean like, like if, if 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 somebody sort of you know let's say for instance you you have a bit of rot on the bottom of your fender you cut it away and you weld the plates and, and let's say you're a half competent welder and you can do a nice looking <laughs> weld you know you, you you could leave that as it is with the work exposed and just give it a lick of paint or some primer and then drive the thing just like that because it, it in my mind it gives it a lot of character yeah um you, you aren't going to do that on every car um and it's not going to suit every car but um the, the the ones that it does suit and, and can really 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 look so cool um like you said it, it almost gives it that vintage racer look where yeah the guys we got into a little bit of a fender bender on the track and the, the fender got a bit crumpled and they would just take a hammer to it and smack the shit out of it until it was straight enough. Exactly. And they would leave all the little bends on, 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 on the top because hell, there wasn't any need to put filler on it because it was a race car. And if, um, if, what, if the fenders were catching, you fill up a, a, what's an empty Coke bottle with some water and you roll the fenders yeah. like, you know, in the, like in the old days, you know? Yeah. yeah. As well, um, I, I really enjoyed that, that, that scene out of, uh, um, was it Ford versus Ferrari when, uh, um, uh, obviously Ken Miles in the movie, yeah. but uh, it took a hammer and, and literally beat the shit out of the, the bootlet to make <laughs> it comply with, with, with the rules. And, exactly. and, 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 and that, that, that was such a sort of a real um, a portrayal of, of that racing area where it was, exactly if something didn't fit, it, it wasn't a, this fancy nonsense in, you know, nowadays where, You've got um, so many rules and restrictions there. You know, if the cars were beaten up and it looked cra like crap as long as it ran and, and met the basic regulations, you could go race it. But um, and and I saw that the other day. Um, obviously, I've been following like that uh, the American list um, with street outlaws, and Chief's car looks rough. Um, yeah. If you, when you see the close-ups <laughs> if you see the close-ups i mean you can see by the wheel wells where they've replaced fenders and it looks like it's been tearing and they fat and to me that i love I, I saw that it's like damn the car looks rough and then you're like yeah but it's a race car it it's is a car. car yeah yeah you, you can see that that thing has been pounded on the road constantly and there's just has not been time to sit and do body work and stuff mm -hmm. I, it always freaks me out when these drag cars come out and they look 100 percent. you know this is like yeah spotless paint and spotless everything and you're like doesn't do anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> um but i'll never forget it years ago man i was a kid we were at tolton and it was this guy in an escort and he, he, he was all alone and he's working on this escort and he's sending it down the whole time but he had his race suit on 
while he's working on the car on the ground. But I'm like cardboard boxes down, dude, and he, he's wrenching the shit out of this. And next thing it's his turn to go up and he gets up and takes off the race suit, puts on those blue overalls, <laughs> you know, long sleeve and the blue pants, gets in the car and then he goes down with it. And we're like, <laughs> that's a real racer. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but so now from your side, where, what's next? Where are you guys going? I mean, I, I know I saw you guys are now starting to play with some tools and like some parts and stuff as well. Wave, what's what's yeah, so from we, the list? We, we we've been lucky enough um, to to um, get a brand uh, on board with us. Uh, so Total Tools South Africa have, have come on board with us, uh, sponsoring us um, all sorts of odds and ends, and uh, um, basically working with us to you know effectively bring a brand on board um, to, to to the shop, um, build them up a little bit, and then also obviously build us up a little bit as well. So yeah. um, it's 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 been it's been a lot about associating ourselves with uh, brands that we use and we trust. Um, so uh, certain suppliers that we get parts from and all that sort of thing. We, we're doing the same sort of thing. So um, I'm a big believer in in punting other businesses and and other people in the industry or whatever you know wherever we can help out, um, especially for brands that, and and companies that we trust. Um, I've got no problem saying to somebody, "Hey, listen, these are the guys we use. Yeah, we trust them. Go, go use them." Because at the end of the day, it's it's all about building the industry and about building um, you know, relationships with not only your customers but also with your suppliers. So, um, uh, it's it, it's 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 been awesome from from that aspect. I love that step. Okay, because to me that that's been a very big part that's been missing in south africa okay you you walk into every shop and the tools the welding machines the machinery that's sitting in there and all this type of stuff and how can i put i've always found that's very and and, and i know this because i've actually dealt with all these brands um yeah. most of them that's out there where i've had conversation and it's very hard because I think, especially in South Africa and in the US, guys understand the value of having your brand in a shop. Okay. Yeah. A, a, a shop that's doing well, association with their work and the product and everything that they're going out there. In the US, Snap On and all these guys understand it. That's an, a, like Gas Monkey and these guys, yes, they've got TV shows, but the brands understand the, the knowledge and everything that goes into it. And they understand that what growth they can get from working with a company like that. Yeah. Where in South Africa, I, I've never really seen that. I, I haven't seen, and I've tried it in, in the past, where companies come and, and sit with a company, go, we want to work with you. We want to be your paint supplier. Okay, where do we yeah. get the party? Because we know the level of work that you guys are bringing out. We know that this is going to help us moving forward. Um, and how do we work together? It's always the shops. It's it's a scenario where the shops are begging, and the, the big guys are just yeah. You know, if you don't, well, you don't. You only have one shop. You you're not a chain that's got you know, thirty five of them. It's like yeah, but no one yeah. in the thirty five shops actually go past fucking reception. Okay, and know that exactly. exactly. Yeah. There's so the the, the 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 coolest thing with with the total for for argument's sake um, was when we sat down with with um, one of one of their guys. Um, we were having a lot of conversations back and forth about how we can get them involved and and you know how we would represent it and vice versa. And he said to me, you know, one of the one of the coolest things for them would be that if people saw the tools that we were using in the shop, and I mean you've got your let's say your, your average um sort of home diy uh, mechanic who wants to tinker on his car a little bit at home he walks through the shop with us um, or he checks our posts and then he sees okay well, so we're using total hand tools um and then he goes onto the onto the the, the net and goes and orders himself a set, a set of total hand exactly. tools for his garage um now that little tiny step um if that's repeated a whole time a whole bunch of times over total suddenly sells a whole bunch of extra tools and then People also not only obviously not only total getting the business out of it, but people also then get a good quality affordable product that they can use at home rather than just wondering, okay, well, you know, what what can I use? And let's say, for instance, you walk down to some other 
um, of the, the lesser uh, known tool brands or whatever, and you go buy yourself something, then you get pissed off with, with mm. crap quality. Um, and not everybody has has the, the, the money to be able to afford the snap ons um, and those sort of tools because they are astronomically oh. priced. good quality stuff. The, it's awesome quality, but geez. <laughs> oh, yeah, you lose that 10 what's it that 10 mil soccer dude you you're gonna feel that <laughs> yeah but no, it's 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 to it's, me it's it also puts it on on the different uh, uh, on the top of a head okay motel is Mersha on them at motel's done a great job where motel's gone out and they've gone and they've put their brand into shops but they promote yeah. the shops where they are they go tell yeah. the people that their products are available in that okay that is a major thing. We have social media and stuff now. If brands, I can say, embrace who their clients are and a, a little bit more uh, than anything else. And I, I've started seeing this trend happening in the US with a lot of the big brands where they start going to the little shops and they start saying, well, this guy is running, you know, uh, Edelbrock system and they're showing his shop and, and what he's doing. It, yeah, that's a big step because th that way you're helping your client, but you're firming your, your name in the market at the same time. So I don't know. I, I think that a lot of the tool, especially now this right to repair thing that's now started, all the brands yeah. and stuff and these guys, they want to get their parts into shops and this type of stuff. God, this is it. You, it's, it's not a just, good opportunity. Yeah, but it's not just because it, 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 it was always a take. It's yes. always a take. Okay. Well, you want okay. You want to buy our parts, then you you know you big bottle and everything to do it. It it has to. We we live in a society now where it has to be for both sides. You know, it's as 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 much important for him to have his product sitting in your shop as it is for you to buy from him. You know, exactly. And and what 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 I think a lot of the the, the suppliers seem to miss is that it's not always the case where the 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 shops like ours or whatever it is. Um, want freebies um no. th that's that's not that's not what what anybody's saying is, is that exactly. all we want to do is we want to say okay cool so we use your brand we trust your brand and all we want is the bit of backing from your end uh, exactly. that says that and it can be something stupid like if i did a social media post and said x brand as has uh, um, you know we're working with them on this or check how well this product works you want them to go and, and basically uh, repost that and share it and say hey uh, cape classic cars are using our products go uh, check them out we, we support them and that sort of thing that little post can make a world of difference it doesn't have to exactly. be a um he has a sponsorship of a of a whole fancy toolbox um, exactly that, that's that's not not, not what what the the, the shops are, are generally asking for no no, it's, it's just also just to have a proper support infrastructure more than anything else. Yeah, exactly. If, if, exactly. I mean, if you especially think towards your welders and this type of stuff, I mean, to have the welding company that you're actually dealing with sit with you and go, cool, what, what do we need? What's your requirements? Guys forget, fucking R&D is expensive, okay? Yeah. Um, and if you actually start working with the shops and finding out what the shops want a little bit mm. more, and guys kind of remember yeah you can go to a normal panel beater but no one wants to see you fix a fucking hyundai okay <laughs> the, the, it's the truth the content the content that you're doing is more exciting it does pull way more way more feedback than just a fender bender that that the guys have done you know it is it's yeah. just the way it, it, it is uh, how it goes and i think there's a there is a massive opportunity for brands to turn around and go, oh, let's start working with guys. Stay, go to the shops and go, well, what are you running? You know, why don't mm -hmm. you try and try try what we're doing? Um, paint shops yeah. to, to try and approach and see how they can set up better painting infrastructures. And, and, and the other part that comes into it is educating the shop. On yeah. the and it's as simple as fucking hand tools or anything like that um that's also where working with shops and stuff comes in is that educating guys on the right way to use it and what goes in and what else is there what is new the whole time and seeing how it works i mean i yeah, um when, yeah i remember when i worked I, I i think when i did the second show or something i bought the truck we got um the vault that impact cordless yeah that thing cut 
workload down to like a third. That mm. that was, and, and I'm not, just the fact that you were, because we weren't running the, the air guns, but you were just running around and going, trr, 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 and you stripping a suspension or you stripping a car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, the amount of just sitting that computer, trr, 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 sitting, wrenching the whole time, you, like we, we keep saying, time is money. And if, if you can take this it is. far, disassembling and reassembling and a third of the time just because you're sitting wrenching it the whole time that's like i said that's that's what makes that makes the, the big difference but we we get I mean, of this one i'm, I'm hitting yeah my yeah head. yeah <laughs> <laughs> see this is the problem we're trying to keep the show at like half an hour because then you like you really start getting into the conversation it feels like you gotta there's stop. so many things in the industry <laughs> I know. Basically, we just need to keep doing these, you know, the whole time. <laughs> no, I reckon. I think it's a much better idea. Dude, but that's a good job with the shop, man. Really. No, um, thanks. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Still, still, still a long way to, to, to go, uh, but uh, um, we, we we're heading in the right direction. Dude, there, there's a few shops that I've, I've got my eye on, which I know there's a lot of stuff, the big future uh, ahead of it. Yours is one of it um no, thanks man. Where, appreciate that where we can see where the guys are doing and the level of work and stuff that's going into it and yeah you guys are doing a phenomenal job and like i said it's the fact that you 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 i always fight with it with that whole scenario of bringing everything in-house because in-house does make it make sense at the same time but in-house can bite you in the ass at the same time um mm. as, as much as and everything expensive. else and it's like stupidly expensive because, like mm -hmm. I said, once again, it's more square meters that needs to go in. It's a bigger payroll that needs to go into. And you got to keep those guys busy. You know, no one can yeah. sit. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the one big thing that people forget is if you've got a big staff turnover, they have to be working constantly. There has to be cost involved. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm hands on. So I'm, I'm in the workshop working alongside my guys all day long. I, I don't, I don't like being stuck behind a desk. So um, we, my office team manages the office for most of the time, unless it's when I'm needed. But otherwise, I'm in the shop wrenching away with the guys. Um, and and uh, I find that's been the best way for for for, for me to sort of um, guide them through the tasks during the day. Um, but even so. It's still difficult, even with a smallish team like, like, like we've got, um, to, to monitor every single person. Yeah. Uh, um, for, fortunately, um, my guys are, are good, and uh, they generally know that what they need to do for, for, for the day. So when I do my rounds and I go check up on the, on the body shop or I check, my, check up here, then uh, um, you know, we, the, the, there's, there's always good progress. So, um, but it's, it's nice to, to, to be on the floor because then I can work alongside them. And if there is ever an issue, like... Uh, it's a there's a, a part fault or a, or a problem that we didn't initially pick up on a body a, a restoration job or something like that. Then we can get it then and there and make a decision and move forward. And, exactly. Um, it's not a case of finding out like three or four days later or whatever it is, you know. So, um, exactly. I, I, I like still being very actively involved. So we'll, 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 once again, we'll link up everything so everyone can get hold of you guys if they want to get to speak to you guys about the car restorations and, and that type of stuff. Um, you guys are still doing imports and exports and stuff as well and finding and selling yeah. cars. We are, we are, yeah. All right. Dude, it's been awesome talking to you, man. You too, Joe. Thank you, man. All right, bro. You have a good one. Cool, cool. Cheers, Abe. Cheers.